So a number of years back, GRASS was starting to work together with NASA in order to find an alternative way of doing this measurement. And what we came up with was a new type of plate that could actually do measurements for subsonic jet airplanes, propeller-driven airplanes, and lightweight small motor rotor UAS uh, with just one simple microphone setup. So what we did, we were taking the same standard as the upside down microphone, and then we were putting a new type of microphone that is a flat microphone from the backside. So now we don't have any disturbing fixture on top, and we don't have anything that is disturbing the measurement. And that means that we have a no interface interference from reflections. It is suitable for measurement of all tonal content. It has a flat, flat response from 3.15 and up to 20 kilohertz. And there are no moving parts or fixtures that can be misaligned. And it is small in size because this, is, this plate is only 40 centimeter. So it is easy to transport and install. So we have taken all the good stuff that is already done by the standards and the work before. And then we have tried to take the newest microphones and the newest microphone, this is the flat microphone. You can actually see the preamplifier is compressed compared to a, a pencil-like microphone. And therefore we have been able to build it into the plate in itself. And this will give you this pressuring doubling and there are no air gap that has to be aligned and something like that. So it is just one single plate that can do all the work. Another very positive thing, it is that this microphone, it is, you can see here, it is mounted from the backside and you can have a small adapter. And with this small adapter, you can do calibration directly on the plate. So before the measurement, you can do a verification of your measurement chain. You can do a pistophon uh, calibration uh, in the field directly on top of the plate. So it is very easy to do a verification of your measurement before you're actually flying over the microphone. This microphone has been on the market for some time and uh, it is used for a number of campaigns that is, that is done uh, by NASA, for example. So if you have read maybe about this uh, new uh, noise, uh, noise evaluation of Joby Aviation together with NASA, uh, they were using more than 50 pieces of this microphone uh, spread out over a larger area and capturing all the noise from uh, the flying Joby Aviation uh, drone or UAS here. So it has been tested in field and uh, everything uh, is, is, uh, is going to work. And this is just a sum up of, uh, of the different methods. So if we have the three different types of, of uh, aircrafts or airplanes, now you will see if you have the free field condition, the six to 10 meters, then of course it is suitable for all three of them because if you can have a free field condition, it is, uh, it is going to work out fine. If you then take the 1.2, it's suitable for subsonic jet airplanes, but it's not suitable for propeller driven or lightweight small multi-router UAS. If you take the uh, the uh, seven millimeter distance between the plate and the membrane of the microphone, it's suitable for subsonic jet airplanes. It is also suitable for propeller driven airplanes, but it gives you a plus six dB uh, value, but it is not suitable for lightweight and small multi-router UAS because of the frequency range going up over 10 kilohertz. This flush pressure microphone is giving you a result, plus six, but it is suitable for all three different kinds of measurements. So if you go back and see here, if you have this six to 10 meters position, that is suitable for all three, but the flush mounted microphone in this pressure configuration, pressure microphone configuration, it's suitable for all three as well. 
it will just give you a slightly higher uh, value when you're measuring. So one takeaway from this, it is that it's very difficult to compare data when you are talking about aircraft monitoring or air vehicle monitoring, because it's really, really dependent on what sort of setup on the, on the microphone. So if you have a 1.2 meter and compare with a free field condition, then you will have 3 dB difference. If you have this, uh, this seven meter upside down and you're comparing with a uh, 1.2, then you have a difference of 3 dB. So you have to know exactly what sort of configuration for the microphone when you're doing uh, uh, um, comparison between measurements. So that was basically it. But I was also promise you a little bit about the uh, psychoacoustic part of it. Now we have been talking about uh, all the legal requirements and how to do accurate measurements that you can compare from, from site to site, from company to company to actually base a legislation on, on. There is also another type of measurements and that is psychoacoustics, how people are actually uh, feeling the noise uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, drones, and we do have some other equipment, and this is called a KMR or a artificial head with artificial ears. So this is actually simulating a human being, and this one is the right way of doing a psychoacoustic measurement on drones. So you put this guy on the ground. And if you can elevate it to the right height of a human being, then you will get the same impression that the human being is having with the reflection from the shoulders, you have the right uh, ear canal, and you're doing an exact measurement of a human being uh, being in that sound field. So we also have a number of uh, solutions for that. and. Uh, this is just another way, it's more a subjective measurement because this is uh, dependent on if you're standing on a parking space or if you're standing on a grass or a forest, uh, uh, in a forest, for example. But this is, uh, this is uh, another type of measurement. So now I would like to ask if you have any questions. Well, I see one question coming in here. Uh, there's one of you asking, when do you expect the ISO standard for drones UAS to be ready and implemented? Well, this is a very difficult question to answer because sometimes it's uh, it's getting a lot of discussion work in in this work but it, my estimation would be that within a year we have a standard that is defining what to measure and how to measure but the actual limits for how much noise it can do and so on and so forth that is probably going to happen in another regime so my best guess would be within a year a year from now end of 2023 so I hope that answered the question. Um, I see another question here. Um, when, when you have this flush mounted microphone on a plate, what size of microphone do you use? Well, this is also a very good question because in reality, you could use any microphone size for this flush mounted uh, microphone. So what we have been using in, in our uh, setup, it is a half inch microphone, but it is, uh, it is absolutely true that you could use a quarter inch or you could use another type of microphone. What is really important, it, it, it is that it is 100% flush mounted it is mounted in the right position of the plate and that you have a good material where you know the reflection from that material. So if you are trying to make it yourself, it's a little bit difficult because it's a lot of 
testing on the actual uh, material, the surface of this. So you, you'll get it right and you get a consistent um, type of material uh, if you're making more of them. So I hope that answered your question. You could also use a one eighth of an inch. Uh, typically, the smaller microphone membrane you're using, the higher frequency you can cover. But more than 20 kilohertz on this setup would be probably not useful. Any other questions? Well, if you have any more questions, you can write it to me. And uh, if we are not, uh, if we cannot handle it in this uh, in this uh, live session, I'll write to you afterwards and answer the question. So thank you very much for your attention, and hope you have uh, have been a little bit more uh, educated on microphones and what to be uh, taking care of when you're doing drone measurements and acoustic measurements on drones. Thank you very much and bye-bye.